Really? Cats. As soon as you turn the camera on, he's been in my face. All morning. Drive me crazy. Not really, sweetheart Charlie. There's Turbo. Can y'all hear that? You hear it? I can't tell. It's been a beautiful week, like in the 50s and 60s and just gorgeous and sunny. And then just like the last two weeks, it's like, like a total copy. Total copy. It's the last couple weeks. It's been beautiful. And then Wednesday and Thursday hit and just everything goes to crap. I don't know if you can... Why am I using the window that can't even be cleaned? The one that's all stained on the inside. Look over here. And, well... You, I don't know if you can really tell what's going on out there. You can certainly hear it. Do you really want to go out there? Really? How bad do you want to go out? Can you do your stretches? You gotta stretch before you go outdoors. Good boy. Okay. Alright. Go on. Can you hear it? Right? Y'all hear that, right? That's ice. It's just pouring ice. I, I guess what we call this sleet. It's stingy. Very, very, very stingy. This could be a problem. I hope we don't lose power. It doesn't seem to be that sticky. This is a bit much. Yeah, Toby. Why did you even want to go out there? Doesn't that hurt your poor Toby eyes? Come on in, baby. Come on in. Come on, Toby. To there you go like the equivalent of a fairly heavy downpour of rain, but just ice. That's fun. Lots of fun. So that's what's going on here right now. You do not need to go back out there. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Saturday vlog. Nothing planned. Just going to go out to the growth space, have some little things I want to do out there, maybe rearrange some things on the shelves. I had mentioned going uh, to some nurseries this week, but I think you can probably understand why that's not happening. There's... I don't... I don't know if y'all heard that. That was Turbo licking Charlie's head. Charlie didn't appear to be in the mood for it. Usually he lets him. He like just walks up and lets Turbo lick his head, but not today. Anyways, yeah, uh, roads aren't safe. This all started yesterday, but it was much lighter, and this is... Well, this is a lot worse. The heater cranked up to full blast in the garage. It's not that cold out there, but I just wanted to make sure that it's really nice and warm and toasty in case there's a power outage. That way there's more of a safety net with the temperatures here. Pumpkin, where are you going? More of a cushion. It'll take longer for things to get cold out there, you know, the warmer it is. Oh, you get it. Where are you going, bite? All right, bye, Pumpkin. What mole palms look? They look okay. They can take this kind of cold, but that's still a good amount of ice. They have stuck on them, but yeah, I think they'll be all right. Whoa, that's way too much of a zoom. Very nice picture, though. I don't hate that. Kind of impressed working with a new vlog camera here. And look at that. That's some pretty good detail from, oh my gosh, look at that perfect little snowflake. This thing's about to get really shaky while I try and zoom in on that. Oh, that's so, oh, I lost it. There it is. So pretty. Hopefully you can hear me. I have like a special protective case on this thing and I'm not quite positive where the mic is. It's a vlog camera so I don't have it wired up like my other one. Anyways, somewhat of a, an abrupt change here. I went out into the grow space to, you know, get to work and uh, two of the grow lights are out. Well, one grow light's out and then I decided that I want to buy a, another one to put on a top. So, need to run to Sam's. All the precipitation stopped. Roads have been treated so they should be fine. Driveway. The driveway is still pretty intense. Like, it's very, very, very icy, very slippery. Yeah, you know, as much as I love the snow and just go nuts for it anytime it comes down, there's one thing that I'm not really a big fan of. This part. There's so much ice on the windshield. It's gonna take me a little while to get that off. So I'm going to work on that, and then I'm gonna run to Sam's, which I probably won't film because the music's very loud in there, but I thought I might pop into Lowe's since it's right next door and have a look at some house plants. I, just, I gotta handle this first. Look at the cute little tiny banana. So cute. Only $4.98. Probably the little prints are truly tiny. You get a whole bunch of plants in the entire banana forest. Also, look at this ivy. Isn't it fun? Isn't that cute? It's called Pixie Dixie. You can't see it. Pixie Dixie. These like fun little hand shaped leaves on it. It's a neat one. Aaron, I, I doubt y'all be able to hear anything I've been saying. So just look at, enjoy the plants. Aren't they cute? So pretty, so fun. Making me so happy. Um, well this is stupid. Just a whole bunch of dead air plants in little plastic bags. Is that one 
might be okay. How are the employees supposed to water them when you put them in these tiny little plastic bags? Doesn't seem very well thought out. Cute little pepperomias. This is a neat alternanthera. Alternanthera phycoidea? I don't know if that's how you say it. Look at those leaves. That's cool. It's got some nice texture. Really fun texture. What kind of ferns are these? These are cute. Oh, fluffy ruffles. Really? They don't look as fluffy and ruffly as I remember them looking. Okay, this has been fun. Time to get back to reality. Need to get home, have some things. Oh, oh, hello. Shiny much? Wow. Oh, PetSmart's getting in on the gardening game. How cute. Grow positive thoughts, grow peace of mind. I feel like that one's a bit of a stretch. Live, love, compost. Watering can, and these cute cactus and Maybe that's supposed to be a sense of area. Can't really tell. And then these fun things. A shovel and a glove and a spray bottle, I think. They're all in clearance. I wonder why. I feel like this is like prime spring stuff. All right, these are adorable. I think that's a narwhal. Some sort of weird tiger thing. A mermaid. It says surprise crack ups. Like you're supposed to destroy them and there's a toy inside. The dog's supposed to destroy them. I'm not into that. Turbo doesn't destroy many toys, which saves a lot of money, but it's still, like, look at that. That's stinking adorable. <laughs> Whatever it is. I just like the colors. It's very pretty. Oh my gosh, they have a toucan. <laughs> Shell-shocked turtle. I don't know about that. Poor turtle. So, things happened while I was out. First, we can start with Lowe's before pet did i even mention that i was going to go to pet smart before i left i can't remember i was so flustered with the multitasking i just ran to get some cat food and then i'm sure you can imagine what happened whenever a sentence starts like that so i got this little banana isn't it cute and i got another little banana that's good it's a little wonky like extremely wonky see that got a crooked trunk not a big deal just Set it down underneath the grow light that should straighten back out on its own. Tiny little banana trees are certainly not something that I need in my life right now because they can be a pain to keep during the winter time. But it was just such a good deal for these little starts. And I was like, I can think of some really cute things to do with these. This one's going to need to straighten out first. Can't tell you for sure what kind they are because it just says beautiful home decor. I hate that. Big pet peeve. Can we please? Label the plants so people can look them up, know what it is that they need to take care of. They're probably the Musa Truly Tiny or the Musa Little Prince. Those are the ones that you will normally find in a really small size like this. When they're starting to sucker at this size, they're that small. You see all the little babies coming up, they're pupping. This one has two underneath it, a little bit squished, but they'll be okay. That's usually a sign that it's probably the truly tiny. The truly tiny starts to offshoot when it's very, very small. Whereas the other types of ecumenitas, which is this uh, broad family within the mooses that are smaller bananas, typically smaller bananas, those usually they need to get a little bit bigger before they start offshooting. But that can also be really thrown off with tissue culture, the various hormones that are used within tissue culture. Some of those have the intention of getting plants to offset and offshoot. But I would think by this size, this would have been out of tissue culture for a pretty long time. Wouldn't be very cost effective to keep bananas in a tissue culture vessel until they reach that size. You'd only be able to have one per jar, which really wouldn't make much sense. Okay, so now that I have grossly overthought and explained that, there's these. Aren't they cute? Just little stick and adorable tiny bananas. Like how this has turned into a haul video. That's, I'll have to explain. Some things happened that got in the way of me being able to do what I need to do. I'll talk about it later. But PetSmart, I just, I needed some cat food. That was it, I didn't need anything else. But you always browse and see what's on sale. And y'all saw the cute little plant thing. So I did get a couple of those. I got this, get that off of there. Grabbed one of the Sansevieria, I'm guessing Sansevieria inspired. <laughs> They're just so stupid, I couldn't stop myself. Well, that's not entirely true. They were in clearance. Otherwise, nah, I don't know. So grab both of those. Aren't they cute? 100% got them for the dog, not to keep out here, to keep on my desk, to look at and smile at. Nope, they're for the dog. Maybe, I don't know. It's gonna be hard to give these to him because this is small enough that he will probably destroy it. I know I said that he doesn't destroy a lot of his toys, but small cheap toys, those are the ones that he does tend to tear into pieces and I don't want that to happen with these, so. 
I guess it's the price. I could have gotten two of each one, couldn't I? Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Turbo has so many toys. Tons and tons of toys because, like I said, he doesn't really destroy them. He's destroyed, like, maybe two or three toys ever. So the, there's a, a lot of toys. All of the Toby and Tucker's old toys, he plays with all of those. So there's those. <laughs> it's adorable. It's stupid. Stupid is fun. Then they also had some spring collars on clearance. I don't know why. Spring hasn't even gotten here yet, but they're adorable. They have these little bow ties on them and this pattern, fun, vibrant colors. A little bit pastel-y, but not quite. So I got one for both of the dogs just because, you know cute. Managed to get Turbo to hold still so that you could see it on him. Toby uh, didn't want to stand up, which I wasn't going to make him. You know, he's an old man, so it, here's that's the, that's the best you can see there. Just fun clearance collars. And then uh, something that I was hoping they would have in stock, but I wasn't sure, was some uh, rock for the aquarium, which is over here. You probably already saw it. I wasn't exactly trying to hide it. Isn't it pretty? I'll take it out of the bag. I say for the aquarium, for the aquarium and for planters. Very, very, very pretty rock. Nice variety of sizes here in this bag. This is a 12 pound bag. So there's those, but then, wait, wait, there's some more. It's, that was supposed to be a bigger reveal. I didn't know it's gonna get all flat like that. Yeah, look at all that. Isn't it pretty? Do y'all get as excited about fun looking rocks as I do. It was a good deal. This type of rock is similar to, if not the same as what's referred to in the aquarium hobby as Sayuri stone. Sayuri, Sayuri, something like that. Carib Sea just, they're calling this mountain stone. So I don't know if it's the same, but it looks very, very, very similar. Pause, wait for the heater to do its thing and turn off. Okay, heater's off. What was I talking about? Just rocks? Yeah, pretty rocks. I'll say some more, there's more to it. Here's the deal. A little bit of background on just aquascaping. All I was going to say is that the supplies tend to be very expensive. That Sayuri stone I was talking about, pricey. This mountain stone, pricey. Anything from Carib Sea tends to be more expensive, but they do usually do a good job of packaging their things and making sure they're rinsed well. For the most part, this batch right here from the first bag is fairly dusty. This batch over here, not so much. I don't live somewhere where I uh, like collecting my own rocks because there's just a lot of farmland around, a lot of runoff, and you just don't always know what's in them for use in a fish tank. You just, there's a lot of risk there collecting the rock. I do have some that I've collected, but for the most part, I generally just feel much more safe just purchasing it. So some of this is for some aquascaping and some fish tanks. Some of this is for perhaps some terrarium stuff that's still up in the air and the rest I want to use in various like bonsai type containers, things where I'm trying to basically create like a mini scape. These rocks are really great for that because they have a lot of character. There's a lot of different colors in here. I don't know why I picked up this one. It's not the best one. Coming off the tripod so we can get a better look at some of these. Like look at all the sparklies in there. Isn't that pretty? Lots of holes and lines. It's the depth of color in the veining that's in them that if I were to do a, like a bonsai where I want it to have a mountain type feel, that's what I would want right there. Or really this piece back here. Look at that one. Isn't this a gorgeous piece? Talk about beautiful. Doesn't that just already look like a slice of a mountain? I have, this is my favorite piece. Harder to see on camera, but it has lots of depth and dimension and holes and various layers and levels to it. Just a beautiful rock. And there's, then there's this one. It's not as special, but it's still, it's got character. Yeah, lots of color, a lot to work with, with the plants and the fish tanks in here. Those bags you saw were normally $34.99 at PetSmart. And then I noticed they were on sale for $30.99 online. And there is another sale going where if you buy one, you get one 50% off. So 24 pounds for 45 bucks. That's a fantastic deal. They weren't labeled as on sale at the store. So I tried to purchase it online, but online it said they only had one bag when they obviously had two. So I just bought two. And then I went to check out and they checked everything and it, the computer recognized it. So that's a sale that's going on right now. If you're interested, 45 bucks for 24 pounds of this pretty decent, I would say high quality for the most part, aquascaping rock that works well for planters too. That's a pretty good deal. A much better deal than 65.88 for 26 pounds. And look at all that. There are two pieces back here that are from a different batch I bought a long time ago. So these two didn't come with this. That was a really good batch. This is a pretty good batch. I'll be able to do some fun things with this. And these all look even better once they're all rinsed off and the dust is off of them. It'll darken them up and bring out a lot of the characteristics within each one of those little stones. Fun rocks. Can't say for sure, but seeing all the 
white veining inside of these. I would think that they may add to the hardness of water if you're using them in your aquarium. So that's something to watch out for. If you don't want your water to be hard, you don't want all those extra minerals and things in the water. That might be something to be careful of. That's just a guess though. I can't say for sure. And that's another reason that I don't necessarily like collecting my own rock for the tanks because I don't, like I can't look at a rock when I'm out scavenging and be like, oh, I know what kind of rock that is. And different types of rocks can affect the pH of water in different ways. And even just having water run across them can affect soil. And we don't have rocks that look like this in Missouri. <laughs> Nothing like this. I cannot wait to get to work with these. Now I need to put them away. I feel like I talked about rocks for too long. I'm really sorry. I, just, I get excited. They're very pretty. They're so fun and natural looking because I mean, they're natural. So that there's that. I have to say, I very much appreciate those of you who stick around for when I geek out over things like a really good purchase on rocks, which is still kind of expensive. As I said the price, I was like, oh, that's, I spent $45 on rocks, which I'm okay with because it was a good deal. And I know there'll be some of you out there who think it's ridiculous to spend $45 on rocks. And to those people, I would say, yeah, you're probably right. Not gonna argue with that. That's, that's a lot of money for some rocks, but they're very, very pretty rocks. And come on now, look at that. Well, look at that one. What a fun angle. It's like very pride rock. Can't you just see a baboon? up there holding up a baby lion to show to the kingdom. All the different colors and textures and lines that are in there, there's something about it that's just very tranquil. That's the emotion <laughs> these rocks evoke for me. It's just calmness and tranquility. I want to have plants and roots and just lovely green things growing all around and over these. That's, that's gonna make me happy and be very pretty. Not happening right now, but hopefully soon. All right, that was fun. There's the fun new things, some dog toys collars, tiny banana plants and Gorgeous, absolutely beautiful rock to use inside various tanks and different planters that I'll be doing here, hopefully, like I said, soon. So the situation with the lights. When I set up the grow racks over here, I talked about how one of the lights broke while I was setting it up and then just magically the next day it started working again. Well, I bet you can guess what happened with that. Yeah, it stopped working, which I had assumed would happen. So that's why I ran out to Sam's was to get a new light to put right there. I tried, I like, beat it a little bit and it didn't turn back on. I don't, you're not supposed to do that. That's what I did the first time and it worked, but not this time. So I have a replacement light to put over there and I also got another light to put up here <laughs> where this spreader is. That doesn't need to be up there. Why not put plants up there? Specifically plants that I only water about once a month, like the Pylocerius back there, the Sansevierias. There's a succulent planter back there that has a lot of South African succulents in it that don't need water this time of year or at least not very much, those can all go up top, right up there. It, I know it seems really high. It's not, well, it kind of is. It's probably maybe seven and a half feet up there, but it wouldn't be a big deal to get the step one out once a month and give them a tiny little drink. But I need a light up there. So I grabbed a light to put up there. I've been planning on doing that for a while. I ordered some hardware that I need to hang it from the spot and uh, it's, it's it's supposed to come in the mail and it, it's not. Because of that winter weather that's out there, you see all that white? You saw it, the ice storm, all the packages are delayed and the hardware to hang that light up there was from Amazon and I just, my experience has been whenever Amazon says your package is delayed, it usually in my experience means that it's not coming. You're not gonna get it. Understandable if the roads and the conditions they are, the delivery drivers shouldn't even been out. I can't really do the light stuff right now because I'm waiting on some packages that may or may not come. I don't know. We will see. Until I can get this done, uh, I can't really move on to their things over here because I'm going to have to take some things apart to get to that light and then do some re It's going to be a, a little bit of a plant shuffle from up here and some things that are down on the ground. So just have to wait maybe a week or a few days to get that done. Not the big of a deal. Not in any kind of rush. Everything's going to be fine. I do think it'd be good to give a Calathea update with these self-watering planters. It's been over a week now. We can go ahead and talk about how they've been doing. I never filled the reservoirs in these. Also, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I potted up some Calatheas and self-watering planters, I think a week ago. So two videos prior to this one. So I think when I did that, and here's just some of those self-watering containers. I never filled the reservoirs, which I talked about in that video but I didn't really elaborate on why. I sort of mentioned it. The plants had been watered fairly heavily and it just made sense to just wait a day and let the water drain down in there as it needed to. And it did, I filled up to right about here. Can we see that line? That's how much water drained out right there. 
So that's what's left in this one. And then the other two are pretty much bone dry at this point. Since it's only been a week, there isn't really that much to update on other than everything seems fine. I haven't had to water them. Calatheas, I would normally water maybe three times a week out here because it's fairly warm, but I haven't needed to do that with these. They haven't drooped at all, except for this one over here. The rattlesnake started to droop just, I think this morning. I hadn't noticed it until this morning. Something like that. I think it was this morning. But the other two, the yellow fusion and then the peacock over here, haven't skipped a beat. Their leaves have been perked up and they've been growing without me having to do anything for them. But again, it's only been like, it's been a bit maybe 10 days. So that's not saying much. Except like I said though, with Calatheas, I normally would have watered these at least three, maybe even four to five times by now because, you know, they're calatheas, they don't like to dry out. And when it's this warm, the plants go through water very, very, very quickly. And then <laughs> there was one, did you hear that? I, the new phone, the preset ringtone, I don't know what it is, but it makes me giggle every single time. Very easily distracted. The other thing that I didn't mention in that calathea video was about the messiness inside of those reservoirs. I had mentioned that I wanted clear reservoirs just so that I have a better idea of when they need watering. The downside is you get to see all the spillage and nastiness that comes out from the bottom of the containers, which doesn't bother me. I would imagine I probably could have put a layer of charcoal on the bottom of these planters before I filled them up with soil, and that would have helped maybe some with that. I don't think it would have made a huge difference, but it would have helped. Or I could even probably just pour some down here just drop it right into those reservoirs and that would maybe clear it up, but I don't know. I'm not bothered by it. It's not bugging me and it's not going to hurt the plants at all. But thought I should put that out there if you saw the video and then liked the planters and then bought them if you already had them and it bothered you, then aware of horticultural charcoal or aquarium carbon, those would maybe probably clear that up. It's hard to say. Water does need to be moving through the carbon. Like it doesn't just soak it up like a sponge. There needs to be movement around it, but it still does something. Just not as much when it's sitting still. So there, there's all that. This one needs more water. I haven't tried this yet because I feel like I'll just spill water all over the place, but they have this little, yeah, I'm not, it's not going to happen. <laughs> they have that indent down there where you can pour the water for them. I don't think my spouts, oh, there we go. Kind of, not really. I wouldn't do that. That didn't work out very well. This would be really nifty for plants like African violets. See if I can, there we go. That's easier when there's not as much water in the watering can. For any other plants that like to be watered from below, but not so much up top. And that's where that would be really, really nifty. The calatheas though, like that soil needs to be moistened. I don't know if I fully trust the wicking capabilities of those cords just yet to keep it fully moist. I mean, I guess it must be doing a pretty good job though, right? It's 10 days without needing to be watered. That's pretty good for calatheas. My experience, indoors, maybe not because normal household temperatures, it's not as warm. I need to figure out how to turn this new phone on silent. It's not as warm in the house. I don't need to water them as often. So maybe that would probably be about, well, no, I have a calathea in the house that I still water, I guess once a week. So just depends on your growing conditions. For me, they've been working out very well. So this is why I like the clear reservoir because I can look at this and go, okay, that's too much water. Don't want the water to actually be in contact with the bottom of the soil because then that's where all the anaerobic stuff happens and rock can start to happen. Good to have a gap of air in there. Boom. There we go. That is easy. Problem solved. And then the trio stars, they're doing well. Again, there's still not a lot to say because it's only been just like a week and a half, but they're looking pretty good, just like the Calatheas. Yellow fusions even popped out a new leaf and then the uh, peacock has a new one coming out right there. There's a little bit of brown tippage on here, which I think this one had on these two leaves when it came in, but I can't remember. There's a lot of wind over here. I talked about that before. There's a lot of air movement. So even with the higher humidity level, I still have to be somewhat careful with plants that get those scorched tips real easily, kind of like this stromanthi over here. Don't remember if it already had those or not, but I've been keeping an eye on it the last few days and they're not getting worse. So I'm assuming those were already there, but again, I don't know. Just have to keep an eye on it. There, you can kind of see them better from over there. It's a few, few brown tips. There's a lot of hot air that blows right in this spot. I've adjusted some fans to help sort of break that up. See if that makes a difference, but it's a little bit early to say. And then the Gloriosum, it's got lots of stuff going on. Got a big bud coming up there. This one opening up, another one right here. And then I think there are two, no, maybe just one one here on the other side. And that's a relief. I wasn't too worried about anything bad happening to it. Cause as I mentioned, when I potted that up, repotted it up, it was really firm, but you just never know when they're that far gone, but it's filling back out, plumping up. 
everything's good there. I built a little waterfall over here, which I turned off for the video because I figured it would make too much noise. I'm gonna work on that some more next week and see if I can get it looking better. This whole thing is slanted. So that doesn't matter. We'll, when it's time to actually do something with that, we'll do something with it. Thanks for hanging out. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. Comment down below, do you get as excited about rocks as I do? I'm going to go ahead and get these calatheas put back over here where they are somewhat more sheltered from the lights. Kind of dark back here, but they seem to be appreciating it. I shouldn't say dark, filtered. It's more filtered back here. Uh, hopefully the hardware I'm waiting for to get that light hung from the ceiling will be here soon and can get on top of that and do some fun things with all the plants over there. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.